So there's a lot of Zen 3 and Zen 4 information floating around right now. And I thought it would be fun and hopefully interesting for you viewers to throw in some extra insights I've been gathering on the side. I think that, well, I've been talking about Zen 3 for a while, just about now... I'm starting to get a good idea of what I think the lineup is going to look like and how it will perform overall. And so let's get into it. And actually, the first thing I'm going to start with to talk about Zen 3, where I'm getting some hints from, is actually from an upcoming Zen 2 product. Something that was referred to me a week ago as Matisse 2. And this did pop up publicly in a leak on Twitter on the 17th. And Adored seems to have received similar information around the same time. Now, to be honest, when I received this information, I kind of didn't do that much with it. Because I don't think it's that interesting to rush out to try to be the first person to tell you quad core Zen 2s are coming. I mean, more quad cores who really cares but there is some more stuff i can add i mean first of all i'll say i've been told that it will be announced on april 21st next to b550 motherboards and i've also been told that those b550 motherboards are having some issues and maybe delayed a little bit and with pcie 4.0 support I think I know why there was a delay. I know that they've been going with a different type of system of getting to PCIe 4.0 specs, something they tried to implement in the Threadripper motherboards, as I recorded in my TRX40 video last year. So it just wouldn't surprise me if there were just some issues and they had to scrap the first release of them and you know, take more time to get them out. But again, the point is B550 will be coming with PCIe 4.0 support in the next few months. And because it uses a new method of getting to Gen 4 PCIe specs, it shouldn't break the bank. It'll be below 100 bucks, And it'll be right at the time that Intel's launching the full Comet Lake, which is, I think something people are reading into too much. So I definitely think AMD's filling out their Zen 2 lineup to meet Intel refreshing with Comet Lake, but I don't really see these Matisse 2 quad cores as i3 killers. I think the i3 was murked by the 1600 AF and cheap 2600s and 2700Xs. Well, I mean last year. In fact, I reached out to another source who directly told me that people are kind of misrepresenting what Matisse 2 is really all about. And so I think I want to talk about that because I think it gives us hints at Zen 3 eventually. So what is Matisse 2 all about? Well, it's definitely not disabled 8-core CCXs. I, I mean, 8-core chiplets. I don't think at the very least. I think AMD is getting good enough yields on TSMC 7 nanometer where that just doesn't make sense. It's obvious it's just one CCX, whether it's its own 35 millimeter squared chiplet, which would save money or something else. Now, what would that other thing be? There's no confirmation. I can't get this out of any sources, and they're acting a little weird about it, on if this is a monolithic die, if this is a 35 millimeter CCX, and then they've integrated a 7 nanometer version of the IO die on it. This would allow you to make a very, very small monolithic 7 nanometer die, something that could possibly fit into the size of one 8-core Zen 2 chiplet, maybe a little bigger. I would say this would be something between 70 and 100 millimeters squared. That, in my opinion, is not an i3 killer. That's a Pentium killer. And being on 7 nanometer gives it longevity if they ever completely switch off global foundries in the next year or two. This would mean they could continue to churn out monolithic quad-core Zen 2 chips that are meant to eventually go into the Ryzen 4000 lineup as rebrands in Crush Pentiums. That's that's kind of what I see this as. But there's no proof it is a monolithic die. Although I guess on that note, I'll add this too. I think it would be really, really interesting if they put like four Vega compute units on it. And what this really turned out to be was kind of a mobile Intel i5 Comet Lake killer as well. Something where the less efficient yields go to desktop as quad-core cheap gaming chips to Merc i3s and Pentiums. And then something they can put into laptops as small, almost lake field killers. I mean, sub 100 millimeter squared monolithic dies. Yeah, that, that can compete with Lakefield. Although again... I'm just throwing that idea out there because I think it would be cool, and I think it's something people should consider, but the fact that it has 16 megabytes of L3 
tells me it probably is just a single quad core chiplet they're still integrating with the same io on desktop i don't know why they would keep that much cash if renoir didn't need the same amount of cash if they're going to also put it in laptops unless something absolutely bonkers is going on and amd's putting out a half zen 3 chiplet early in the low end half of a zen 3 chiplet would have a lot of cash so i'm just throwing that idea out there, the idea of a half Renoir. But okay, now I have mentioned Renoir and I've just been talking about Matisse too this whole time. How does all this relate to Zen 3? Well, I think people need to look at these slight increases in thread count that's been going on across the board. This to me hints at what the Zen 3 lineup will probably look like. Now, we already know that AMD is testing Renoir desktop flavors right now. So I think it's safe to say if they're testing Renoir to put on desktop, that will eventually slot in replacing Picasso on desktop. And remember, although it was Zen Plus, it did slot into the Desktop 3000 series with just four core and eight threads. Renoir doubles this. It stands to reason AMD would slot in Renoir despite being Zen 2, just like before, as a Zen 2 APU below Zen 3 in the Ryzen 4000 desktop series. But you see what I'm getting at here? The 1300X, the Zen 1 R3 1300X was just four cores as well. And now we know the 3300X is going to be four cores and eight threads. Thread counts have been slightly increasing on little places across certain parts of the segments in AMD's lineup every Zen generation. And so let's get to a chart. This is kind of what I think the Zen 3 lineup's going to look like. And to hammer home what I'm talking about, let's take a trip down memory lane. Now, this is Zen 1 here, and then this is Zen 2 and Zen Plus, because remember, they use Zen Plus for some of the APUs in the desktop lineup. Now, with Zen 1, they actually charge, for example, $499 for the 8-core 1800X, but the 1900X was also 8 cores, and it was a Threadripper chip and the 1950x was 16 cores just like the 3950x but anyways this is what they launched with it was not as good at gaming as some intel processors but it profoundly increased core counts to a level intel had half as many of and so it was of course really well taken then they moved to zen 2 and yes i understand that for instance the 3600 x is also just six cores 12 threads like it was for two previous generations but that's not entirely true for everything else the 3900x had 12 cores now instead of eight cores with the 1900x they kept 16 with the 950x but you know they bumped up some of the other ones again what we're about to get with matisse 2 is four cores and eight threads in the 3300x that was just four cores and four threads before the 50 the was it 1500x was four cores and eight threads before now it's six cores six threads they are slowly elevating core counts every gen even with zen plus they brought out 32 core thread ripper and then with zen 2 thread ripper they brought out 64 cores they are increasing core counts just not uniformly across the board and so let us move on to what i think is going on with zen 3. And like I keep saying, well, maybe not every tier in a new generation gets a core count bump. You should expect some core count increases with every new Zen generation. And I don't think Zen 3 and the Ryzen 4000 desktop lineup will be any different. So going down to the, what would be, I guess would be called either the 4300G, if it's cut down Renoir, or the 4300X, I think they'll go to six cores and six threads. And I do think this will probably be cut down Renoir. These would be dirt cheap monolithic seven nanometer dies the worst yields you know akin to something like the 4500u right now just take the less efficient versions of those and send them to desktop for six cores six cores six threads starting at a hundred dollars i don't think i3s will be able to compete with this at all and then above that i think you will get the 4400g which is yeah just inefficient eight core yields of renoir eight cores 16 threads eight vega compute units these are cheap. They will be able to sell these for these two products here for as low as they want before we move up to the 4500X, which I do believe will move six cores and 12 threads down to the 500X nomenclature at about $189. And this would compete, if you think about it, with the cheapest i5s that aren't unlocked. So it honestly makes sense with Comet Lake moving six cores to their 
lower tier even i5s. And then, of course, the I do think the 4600X will move up to 8 cores, 16 threads in the $200 price bracket. And then, you know, I think they'll keep that 700X as 8 cores, but they will bump up the 800X to 12 cores, 24 threads, probably, in my guess, anywhere between $400 and $500. But I do think, again, they'll move 16 cores to the 900x they keep increasing core counts here generation over generation guys and i just think after you know by the time this comes out it'll have been a little over a year of the 3950x being 16 cores they'll say it's time to move the not best yields of our 16 cores with zen 3 down to 549 dollars and this would absolutely destroy comet life but we'll get to that in a second and i think they will just reserve the 4950x to be the highest clocked version of their 16 core, right? Because they say they expect slight clock speed bumps. So I think this will be something like the 3950X performance with higher IPC. And then this one will be like the 4.9 gigahertz edition for $700. And I do think what you're going to see if you look at these prices is basically slight price increases for most of the segments not all of them but most of them but slight core count increases as well thus amd is technically increasing the amount of cores you get for the money right so let me elaborate a little bit on what i mean so if you look at you know this is replacing the 3600x which was 250 and then of course the 2600x was 229 i think they'll bump this up maybe even all the way up to 299 because now it's eight cores but because it's eight cores, no one will complain. I think the 700 will just stay right where it is. And again, it's like, all right, the 3800X was 399. I think they want to bump this back up to 449. Remember, they used to charge $500 for the 1800X. I think they'll charge 449 for the 12 core version, maybe even 499. But again, since it's 12 cores, I don't think anyone will care. And of course, this will be competing with Comet Lake. And let me just make this pop up for a second to show just how screwed I think Intel is versus Zen 3. I think I said all I really need to say about that lineup while I was showing you the chart. I think you're going to see surgical core count increases on many of the Zen 3 lineup. AMD has said this repeatedly. Lisa Su has said AMD will increase core counts every generation, and I believe they will do the same with Zen 3. And I just don't know... How Comet Lake's going to compete with that, considering how much energy it's going to use. And actually, speaking of increased energy counts, let's talk about Rocket Lake. I have been told by a source that the Z490 motherboards coming out will be able to support Rocket Lake in addition to Comet Lake, assuming they have really powerful VRMs. Thus, this directly suggests that while Rocket Lake will have higher IPC being Willow Cove-based versus Comet Lake, and although it will just have eight cores and those eight cores are expected to outperform 10 Skylake Comet Lake cores, it's still going to use a boatload of energy. Now, I did push back a little bit with this source and say, well, could it be about voltage regulation or could it be that they realized Comet Lake really needed more VRMs anyways? And he said, well, it could be the Z chiplet they're adding for the graphics as well. So I wouldn't say that we should be sure that Rocket Lake uses more energy than Comet Lake. I, I think there's almost no chance they could even sell a product that uses more energy than Comet Lake. At that point, you're getting way worse than even FX9590 power usage levels. But what I do think is that Comet Lake is not going to bring 80 watts or anything like that, despite being just eight cores. That Rocket Lake's going to keep that 125 watt to 150 watt power usage. And of course, we know that uh, with restrictions removed, Comet Lake will use over 200 watts. I don't think Rocket Lake's going to be any better. And, you know, I have been told by an Intel source over and over to remember in the back of my mind that, yes, Rocket Lake is a Willow Cove port, but Willow Cove was designed for 10 nanometer. And when you port a, when you back port a node, not everything works out perfectly. There are some efficiency gains and IPC increases that well, we're only possible on 10 nanometer, and so do not expect Rocket Lake to literally just be 14 nanometer higher clock Tiger Lake. That's not what it's going to be. It'll probably be in between the performance, but at least they'll be able to make it since it's on 14 nanometer.
And I guess the other good news is that it seems like the high-end Z490 boards will definitely support Rocket Lake as well. Look at the power stage increase, almost doubling over the previous generation with Asus boards. I don't think they would just do that for absolutely no reason. And Ycry, who's pretty reliable, says that Rocket Lake should work on the Z490 boards. And in fact, it's even being speculated to me that they may announce Rocket Lake ready for their Comet Lake setups, although I think that depends on how desperate Intel gets. But no matter how you dice it, I just think I'm going to say a thing I have been saying in all of these other videos. Intel is about to go through one of the roughest patches in its company's history. It's a race to get to Alder Lake because everything before that just can't compete with Zen 3. And let me add it up. Matisse 2 brings out four core CCXs, bringing out Zen 2 IPC to the sub $100 market. That's not just murking i3s, that's murking Pentiums, especially if they rebrand it as the 4100X in the Zen 4000 lineup on desktop. And Renoir should slot in above that, bringing 8 cores and 16 threads possibly to the sub $150 market with above that higher core counts following and 15% IPC increases. And again, guys, a 15% IPC increase is a Zen 2 level IPC increase in under two years again. I don't see how Comet Lake can compete with this and Rocket Lake sounds like it's just as power hungry and it's not going to stop there. If we summarize early Zen 4 information and there's enough to paint a picture, we can establish that there will be further IPC increases, again with enhanced L2 cache sizes. And we also know that we're going to increase core counts. Multiple sources have told me that they will be increased over Zen 3, although they haven't said exactly what. I think it's safe to say between 20 and 32 cores on consumer desktop. That's just the next step after 6 and of course, there will also be things like AVX 512 support. And you know, here's the big one. It doesn't really matter if Alder Lake brings a big little design with, say, 16 Golden Cove threads and 8 little Atom threads on 10 nanometer plus plus. It's competing with 5 nanometer enhanced Zen 4 that over the N7P enhanced Zen 3 uses should give it another 50 to 70% advantage. And supposedly Intel doesn't really have access to this node. It's AMD exclusive. Even if Intel were to start making products on 5 nanometer, and that goes for NVIDIA as well, the enhanced nodes tend to be about 20% better than the other nodes. So AMD just has a 20% advantage with 5 nanometer Zen 4 even against anything Intel can put on TSMC's 5 nanometer. It's, it's going to be rough. Until Intel can just get their own working 7 nanometer and then own working 5 nanometer and catch up with TSMC, AMD's going to have a major advantage. And it's going to be solely up to Intel to solve this technology gap. The EU will not let them get away with it no matter how much they complain, as I've covered before. That's why I keep emphasizing AMD's roadmap. Zen 2 was the initial punch to the chin, throwing Intel off balance. Zen 3 throws them to the ground, and so, I don't know, I guess Zen 4 is curb stomping a corpse. It's going to be a dark two years for Intel. At this point, I just think it's about them weathering the storm... I just hope they stop laughing about it. And, well, that's about all I've got to say. That's my extra insight. That's my extra information. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it, like it, and let me know what you think in the comments. And, of course, if you really liked it and my other videos and podcasts, consider supporting me on Patreon. We get exclusive content every week. Until the next video, thanks for watching.